Welcome to the accessibility presentation. This presentation is part of the American Council of the Teaching of Foreign Languages at Fall and the National Foreign Language Resource Center, NFLRC, and correspond to uh, the watch section of this lesson. My name is Beatrice Potter. I am a faculty member in the Modern and Classical Languages Department at Valdosta State University, VSU. Accessibility. In this presentation, I will discuss general accessibility principles and requirements for creating accessible web and course content for online and hybrid courses. To expand the concepts and information, please go to the Dig Deeper section of this lesson. The content is targeted to online educators who are not familiar with online accessibility or who would like to refresh their knowledge. The image in this slide has the 12 symbols to promote and advertise accessibility for people with disabilities in general and not just online. Learning outcomes. At the end of this presentation, you should be able to identify challenges learners with disabilities have in online courses and be more aware of the importance of providing accessible material. You will also be able to identify web and information communication technologies, ICT, accessible issues and enhanced course content by implementing basic solutions to your online content and web. Agenda. I started with the learning outcomes for this presentation. The agenda will be followed by accessibility matters and an introduction to the existing law standards and guidelines for accessibility compliance. And as we briefly learn about section 508 standards, web content accessibility guidelines, the acronym is WCAG and it is pronounced with CAG 2.0 and the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C's Web Accessibility Perspectives. Then I will share some benefits of accessibility for online courses and conclude with a summary and a list of resources and references. So, why accessibility matters? An introduction. Well, here I have a checkpoint. First, let's think for a moment about the internet, the web, online content and electronic resources and how you access them. Okay, now, before you continue with the presentation, let me ask if you had an opportunity to watch the two videos that I recommended before beginning the presentation. If you did not have the opportunity to go over them, please take a short break from this presentation and go to the Dig Deeper section of this lesson to find the links to the video and transcripts. Once you watch the video, please come back and continue with the presentation. The videos are from the Web Accessibility in Mind Web Amin organization. The videos will help you understand how people with disabilities use the web, their frustrations, when they can't access the information and what you can do to help them when they are online learners. Why accessibility matters. The students in video one helped us gain an appreciation of web accessibility by understanding the user's perspective. The student in video two share some of their experience with the web and accessibility. These videos and their content emphasize how important it is for online learners to be able to effectively navigate course content and websites, noting that some students may require the use of assistive technologies, AT, and or support. In the lesson, you will, be, you will be able to find additional videos related to specific disabilities. 
importance of providing uh, accessible material for these uh, online students. Let's very briefly look at section 5 of A standards, the WebK 2.0 guidelines, and the W3C international guidelines as we look at the law standard and guidelines. They emphasize the importance of providing accessible content and how you can verify that your course material is compliant. Since we will not be able to check each of the standards and guidelines due to available time for these presentations, link to the information and checklists are included in the lesson. Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, as amended in 1998, establishes guidelines for technology accessibility. Section 508 requires that when federal agencies develop, procure, maintain, or use electronic and information technology, federal employees with disabilities have access to and use of information and data that is comparable to the access and use by federal employees who are not individuals with disabilities, unless an undue burden will be imposed on the agency. So, they um, provide technical criteria requirements for software applications and operating systems, web-based information or applications, telecommunications, video or multimedia products, self-contained closed products, desktop and portable computers. Section 5 of A is standards and education. We see Section 5 of A standards reflected in the U.S. Department of Education Accessibility Statement, which highlights the importance of Section 508 to educational institutions. Part of the statement reads, Section 508 is a federal law that requires agencies to provide individuals with disabilities equal access to electronic information and data comparable to those who do not have disabilities unless an undue burden will be imposed on the agency. The Section 508 standards are the technical requirements and criteria that are used to measure conformance with this law in education. All government agencies are required to comply with Section 508 and any institution that receive, receives U.S. federal funding through the Assistive Technology AT Act must comply with the law. If you are involved in online education and providing electronic and information technology, you need to implement the standards and should have an accessibility policy and dedicated resources for students with disabilities. Students who find that course content and material are not accessible may contact the U.S. Department of Education Office of Civil Rights or the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Civil Rights and or initiate a law suit in a state or federal courts for ADA and Section 504 violations. Okay, so now we can move to um, with K 2.0 guidelines. Now that we understand the importance of providing inclusive content and complying with accessibility, let's look at the guidelines and how they can help you comply with Section 508 and create inclusive online content and electronic resources. The major categories of disability types provided in the WebK 2.0 are visual, hearing, motor, and cognitive. For visual, we have blindness, low vision, color blindness. For hearing, deafness, and hard of hearing. For motor, we have inability to use a mouse, a slow response time, limited fine motor control, and cognitive learning disabilities and distractibility, inability to remember or focus on large amounts of information. 
see uh, provided links to the web I mean page for each one of these categories that are provided in the lesson. You also have here um, one of this um, a picture with uh, uh, eight of the symbols that uh, represent online accessibility. With CAT 2.0 guidelines were developed by the World Wide Web Consortium, W3 organization, it provides a single share standard for web content accessibility that meets the needs of individuals, organizations, and governments internationally. The guidelines provide recommendations for creating web content with enhanced accessibility for the disability categories I listed in the previous slides to aid individuals with blindness and low vision, deafness and hearing loss, limited movement, learning disabilities, cognitive limitation, speech disabilities, photosensitivity, and any combination of these. Web aiming has extracted the guidelines and provided a great checklist with the WebCAT 2.0. They can be used when creating and checking for accessibility. Please take time to look the WebCAT 2.0 checklist in detail. It has 12 guidelines and each guideline has three levels of conformance. A, double A, and triple A with A the lowest and triple A the highest. For each guidelines, there is success criteria and a list of tests and information that can help you. These guidelines will also make your web content more usable to all users. The guidelines have uh, principles. They have four principles. And the uh, guidelines focus heavily on the principles of accessibility rather than techniques and encourage web content developers to think through the process conceptually. The four guiding principles are perceivable, which um, relate to web content in, that is made available to the senses, sight, hearing, and or touch. Operable, uh, which uh, relates to interface forms, controls, and navigation that are op uh, easy to operate. Understandable, we has content and interface uh, that is easy to understand. And it's robust. Content can be used reliably by a wide variety of users, agents, including assistive technologies. Four is an acronym used to describe these principles. Four is easy to remember and remind us to keep individuals in mind. Web3C Web Accessibility Perspectives videos. Now let's look at the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, which has many accessibility resources available. The W3C states that web accessibility is essential for people with disabilities and use, useful for all. I have included a list of videos and resources in the um, lesson. And depending on the subject you teach and the content you make available to your learners, you can select the appropriate resources to find out more about their impact and what you can do to provide accessible content. I also recommend you have a copy of the guidelines checklist with you so you can go through your material and verify compliance. The resources that I have included relate to keyboard compatibility, colors with good contrast, clear layout and design, text-to-speech, large links, buttons, and controls. Also, video captioning, text and how to customize it, voice recognition, understandable content, notifications, and feedback. Some of the benefits of inclusive material at a glance are, Helpful illustration, proper, 
properly organized content and clear navigation will help all learners, regardless that they are face-to-face, -face, online, or in hybrid. Captions and transcripts necessary for deaf and hard of hearing users can be useful to others, inclusive viewing a video without audio, which may happen due to technical issues. I have to say here that captioning and transcripts have helped me many times when I can't understand well due to accents or clarity of the audio. Can you think about how some of these features have helped you? Okay, now also the benefit, um, they provide additional support to students who are not native English speakers and are still in the process of learning the language. They have access for people with low literacy and people to not fluent in the language. It also takes into account the use of assistive technologies, AT, used by learners with disabilities and in many institutions. It accommodates different learning styles. So searches are easier and faster due to tags. Assist adult learners with age-related impairments, even though they may not be regarded as having a disability. It assists, or they assist students with temporary work assignments away from their home base, injuries or illness. I have had many students that have uh, been able to continue uh, the, with the courses due to uh, all the features that I have included in my online classes. Also, um, some other benefits are access for mobile uh, device users. And finally, accessibility is essential for social equity and opportunities as it provides access to all. Now some recommendations. Um, at your institution or organization, contact the office that provides services and resources to learners with disabilities and um, access them. Take any training that is given and become familiar with assistive technologies and tools available to work on content and instructional material. Review your course for accessibility using the checklist for Section 508 standards and WebKit 2.0 guidelines. Find out accessibility compliance at the, of any application you use, including your institution's learning management system. Add an accessibility statement in your syllabus. This is very important. Your institution may provide one, if not, work on this. Recommendations for documents. Some recommendations for your HTML, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and or accessible PDFs, documents, uh, and content are. You should organize content in a well-structured sequence. Use universal design principles. Keep backgrounds simple. Do not let them overpower the text. Provide text equivalents for all non-text elements, such as images, will alternate text. Use recommended color contrasts and style. Do not use animation or flashy images. They may cause scissors. Create scripts before recording captions and provide transcripts. Provide electronic resources that are accessible. Make a point or checking if they are, before you post them. Be sure your handouts are accessible. This is very important. Also, link text should make sense out of content. Do not use click here or learn more. Select ebooks or any um, resources from, uh, that you provide to your students that are compatible with accessibility. For the books, for the text, talk to the publishers. Be sure their material is accessible. If not, talk to them and be sure that you, are, you have a discussion with them about the importance of being compliant. 
To conclude this presentation, let's um, go over the summary. While educators may be interested in making technology accessible and usable by persons with disabilities, the reality is that they often do not know how or where to start. Awareness comes first. This presentation introduces participants to accessibility issues and challenges that learners with disabilities face. An overview of the law standards and guidelines available to help create and provide accessible web and information communication technology and how it applies to online education has been provided. A list of links to online documentation, videos, and tutorials are included to help research more the topic. Those are included in the dig deeper part of the lesson. This, the following slides will have resources and references. And I also have um, information provided for the images that I use. And thank you. And um, thank you for listening uh, to this presentation. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me.